Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back with more news on Cyberpunk 2077. This is via Twinfinite.net. The districts of Cyberpunk 2077 are as different as possible without being unbelievable. This isn't just for the sake of variety, but also intended as a navigational tool. Each district has a dominant gang. The district of Pacifica is dominated by the Voodoo Boys, which are actually deeply integrated with the community. The Voodoo Boys have a, the reputation to be the best netrunners in Night City, and they have made cyberspace basically their religion. Haiti is flooded, which is why the people which used to live there have mostly settled in Pacifica. Each situation in the game can be solved in several different ways, with many different gameplay approaches. The player has many different tools to solve an issue or bypass it. There are consequences to the choices the players make. They're not only affecting the current quest, but also the story. Quests are iterated upon a lot by the developers, providing designers with new ways to approach issues and interesting consequences to implement. There are many different kinds of vehicles in the game. Some are simply very utilitarian in how they're built. On the other hand, there are super luxury high-end vehicles. Players are limited only by what they can afford. There are both cars and bikes on top of surprise vehicles that haven't been revealed so far. The super high echelon of society has flying vehicles and players will be able to ride some of them through story moments. Fast travel is possible. The development team has actual city planners at work on designing the city, the traffic flows and elements of that sort. Most districts have fixers that can give you jobs. They may contact the player and give them quests. Some of these jobs are street stories which appear on the player's map. The map is really immersive. It's a cool looking point cloud version of Night City. There is always a reason behind quests and tasks to perform in the city. Street stories are basically a representation of these jobs. They're a different way to feel immersed in the city. Each life path defines the beginning of the story. You're a completely different person in a completely different place, depending on which one you choose. It carries over through the whole story, from the beginning through the very end. They let you unlock side branches in the dialogue and at times in whole quests. Attribute points define the core characteristics of your V. Skills define the proficiencies and what your character can do. Perks add more depth on top of that. Cold blood, based on the cool attribute, is a skill that allows you to survive in tough situations. It gives you a boost in damage when you're in a pinch. Using that skill over and over lets you evolve it and pick different perks. If you add specific perk to your athletic skills, it lets you carry bodies without being slowed down. The cool attribute indicates how cool you are under pressure. The inventory is where you manage your style. The developers are aware of the usual conflicts between stats and looks in many games. They tease that they're working on solving the issue so they that you can look the way you want to look and still have the best stats you can afford. Cyberware can be enhanced. For instance, cyber legs can be customized to let you jump while emit emitting less noise for a stealthy approach. Shorts let you experiment with cyberware without actually needing to equip it. There are multiple ways to acquire and enhance cyberware, including the Ripper Dock and the Street Cred system, which can open up different vendors and services, including new cyberware. 
building a net runner character lets you be very creative in how to solve situations. If you hack an access point, you can use quick hands depending on where you are. You can do different situational things with that. You can play the whole game without killing a single person. Every player can do it and you don't need to be a net runner to achieve that. At times it requires thinking about it and finding a solution. The developers try to find a way to avoid punishing players for their choice of playstyle. A solo build can be strong or fast. For instance, strong solos can rip weapons off turrets. Fast solos have a lot of traversal skills and can access areas the others can't. The techie is the third basic arch type besides netrunner and solo. And they double with hardware. They can use a flathead, which is a spider bot that can be controlled remotely and do things for you like manipulate, manipulating devices or engaging enemies in combat. It also has customization options. Arch types are just basic setups you can freely create hybrid builds between them. Guns are divided in three categories. Smart guns, tech weapons, and power weapons. There is a weapon that starts shooting bullets slowly and then accelerates the longer you shoot. There is a class of guns created by a Russian company purpose made to fight cyberware. Some weapons have secondary firing modes. There is a shotgun with eight barrels. Every gun manufacturer has its own history and lore. Everything is rooted in the world. There are a lot of different melee weapons. Some can be thrown and you can specialize in melee weapons. You can play a cyber ninja and there are various different katana available. There is also cyberware dedicated to melee. One specific cyberware enhances your reflexes with the effect that you perceive time as slowed down. You can breach a squad's network and use a demon software to hack their cyberware. For instance, you can make them pull the pin of their own grenade or simply shoot themselves. The nanowire allows you to do it from a distance while otherwise you need to take down an enemy to gain access. Each playthrough of the game will be, will be very unique. No playthrough will be like the others. There are two major ways to customize guns. The first is cosmetic with various paint jobs and decals. The second is attachments that can boost the stats and add functionality like optics and suppressors. The more you use the gun, the better you become at using it and this changes the animation of reloads and handling. Increased accuracy which will also make your crosshair become smaller reducing bullet dispersion. And that is all the news I have for you about Cyberpunk 2077. If any more news pop up, you best believe I will be making a video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like. Share this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. Thank you all for watching. I'm out. Peace.